if you're a race car driver right. and you keep coming in number seventh, right. but you're still spending a bunch of money, you're spending more money than the people that are coming in on in in the first, second, and third positions, right. not to mention the fourth and fifth and sixth. Right. You'd look at them and see what they're Wouldn't doing. Wouldn't you look at them to see what they're doing would, right, were, to see what you could do to make your car run faster, run cheaper? Wouldn't right. you do that? You would if you were being logical. Leave your rose-colored glasses at the door. It's time for Carl and Mike. Whoa. We're live. Live? Yes. Welcome, live. Carl and Mike. <laughs> Episode 9. Yes. Number 9. Did you ever uh, nine. understand number that nine. Beatles thing? No, what was that? When, you remember when it came out? Yeah, number 9. Revolution number, yeah. number 9. Did you, like, you know, get stoned and listen to that and try to figure out the meaning of it? Uh, I was drawing breath, yeah. <laughs> did I try to figure it out? No. Yeah, no, I never did either. No, but even to this day, whenever some, whenever I hear that number 9, something like that, I'll just start going... Number nine, number nine, yeah, me number too. nine. To see if anybody picks up on the reference, but it's it's just almost kind of like a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, do you do that? Yeah, I do that too. I think a lot of people probably do. Number nine. Well, you know the other thing that's weird about uh, things like that, if I think about it, um, I do the same thing with uh, quotes from Seinfeld. What? I do, yeah, I do the same so thing like, with quotes. So, like, give me an example. Uh, uh, somebody will say, well, that, that person's, I think that person's gay. And the first, the thing oh. you would say is what? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That one I do. Oh, yes, correct. I do that and, and so that you do stuff like that all the time. Or, or, no uh, soup for you. Yeah, no soup for you. Yeah. And, um, and, uh. I love those kinds of references like that. I don't know what it is. It just becomes part of the culture, the yeah. the muddle and the mush that's in my mind. Yeah, and it just comes out, you know. Yeah, and I agree. It, it, it is part of the culture, but it's a shared cultural thing. It's almost like uh, m- the music that we share. You know, we've talked right, about that right, in the past. Right, there, right. Every, there, people share music and, and those kinds of uh, of uh, experiences that we had with that. I know for a long time way back when I used to do you look marvelous. Remember oh yeah. That? Yeah, that's yeah. another one. I remember a guy yeah. coming thought I had originally came up yeah. with that and he yeah. was like disappointed to find out it, it existed on Saturday yeah. Night Live. But yeah. Oh, you yeah. look marvelous. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, and and well, it's, I think Saturday Night Live had a lot of that stuff. That thing has been on how long has that been 40 on? 40 years. Now? 40 years. That's the sad part Holy is I actually shit. remember when it first came yeah, out. Yeah, I know. Well, it used to, uh, we were talking about that the other day. It's, it's kind of like uh, I remember when we were, I guess, in our early 20s, Yeah, you know, we'd go to parties. You'd have parties over at somebody's house. Everybody's sitting around getting high, drinking, just having a good time, listening to music. And boom, 1030 hit. Everybody shut down. The music was off. Mm-hmm. The, the TV came on, and it was like a... a, a an experience where we all sit there and watch together. Yeah. You know who the? I think this is correct, and I'm going to have to check and and quote. You know who the first musical guest was? I remember uh, George Carlin was the first guest host. I think Zappa. Oh yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think right. Zappa was the first one. Yeah. So that tells you a hell of a lot. And yeah. and Carlin was the first guest guest host, right? Yeah, I don't think I saw. I was in uh, <laughs> senior year of high school when that came out, and I don't. I think it took me about yeah. halfway through the first season. Yeah. Then all of a sudden it kind of picked up consciousness around it. And then it became appointment television in college, I remember. Yeah. So I, th- I think that was, yeah, it was kind of like a, a Seinfeld of that era, for right. lack of a better thing. You know, right. but it's still going. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, think I it watch was it occasionally. Zap, because I think Don Pardo was part of the music. Now, I don't know if this is this episode that Zappa was on or is another one, but that's uh, the song I Am the Slime on your video Mm -hmm. where a voice goes, that's right, folks, don't touch that dial. And Don Pardo just passed away. Yeah, Pardo didn't do that part. Zappa did that, and Pardo did the the musical part, which I thought was an interesting, but that would be a typical Zappa kind of flip. It's still, uh, Chris Rock was hosting it last week, and there was some controversy around his monologue. What? Uh, where he did... Uh, oh, I heard that monologue. Yeah, he did it was kind of... jokes about 9-11. Well, kind of. He talked about the Freedom Tower was 
yeah. move, people were moving in, and he was like, I ain't ever going in that yeah. building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. it was pretty, considered pretty controversial. Well, now that's interesting. But I, I have noticed that they've, they've upped the uh, ante on the guest host this year and really the music. I mean, Prince, come on. And uh, because I think, I don't know if they, they feel like they've got the, the depth of, on the bench. Well, I think they've always the had pretty they, good guests, had, don't you think? Well, yeah, but it just seems like, you know, the uh, they're kind of with losing some of the people that they've lost yeah. over the last couple of years. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and, and uh, ha- was it Haler? Bill Haler? Bill Hader. He Hader. hosted this year. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's amazing, any you know that it's done forty years, and you know it's a, always been a hit and miss show kind yeah. of thing. Which comedy is, Michael? I'm sure we've had a couple of <laughs> yeah. hits and misses. It, it 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 is kind of a hit, and it has been kind of a hit, but it's had some really killer years. I remember yeah. going through watching some of it when it really wasn't funny, and you go, "Oh man, this just." blows right. is this going to be the end of it and it i think it's like it's base- not it just keeps going it's kind of like, like baseball, baseball you know you get uh rookies and, and it takes a couple of years you know so some years they go to the world series and some people some yeah. years they're the uh last place the, the cubs don't even go there <laughs> the cubs are going to be great next year <laughs> oh that's no and you said it. that for how many years uh, my whole life yeah yes. there you go but no this year is different seriously yeah. they hired joe madden uh, but you don't know anything about baseball, so it's really no, hard to I talk to you about. Shit one more head you really head. don't care. How did no. you miss the whole childhood and not get into baseball? Uh, did you play little league? Yeah, I did. I played did little you? league. Yeah, and um, uh, played for the Y, but also little league. Little league. Did you league, collect and baseball it, cards? And then I played some in in uh, junior high too. Did you collect did. baseball cards? Oh yeah. 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 So you did all well, that. Well, I also collect. Yeah, but also as far as collecting cards, I also did. Um, the uh, Civil War cards. Did you ever we see had those? We Civil War cards? Oh, yes, we did. That's a those Texas thing. Awesome. We didn't have that in the Midwest. No, 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 no. They, well, maybe. You mean like Robert, Robert Lee? Yeah, and they the would have the, the, the generals and, and really? stuff like that. But it, was, but it was more about battles. So they so had they different were, battles on yeah, the cards? Yeah, they had a, one for Manassas, one for Gettysburg, one did for Vicksburg. Did you get a piece like of that. gum in it and it showed oh, yeah. up at oh, the... Yeah. Are mm-hmm. you serious? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they also had a series of cards for... Um, monster movies, you know, like Wolfman and Dracula and stuff like that. Did you never saw that. those. Were black and white. Well, those maybe were they still, did. I... Those were still shots out of out of the actual movies that they made into cards, which made perfect sense. Yeah. Now, why wouldn't somebody do that today? You know, that would that would. Uh, yeah, I that definitely would... collect the baseball cards. Oh yeah, it's like crazy. So those, and then what was some other ones that I did? The the. Civil War ones are the ones I wish that I had. There, there was some pretty good artwork on that. I, I mean, wonder really if they were. have any value now on eBay looked, or something like that. And, Do they? You know, I no? guess for people that are, you know, in the Civil into War, that, there's yeah. some people that are, I mean, they go to the whole reenactment oh, stuff. Yeah. I've never, yeah. you know, got into that world, but that subculture uh, is pretty strong. Yeah. And I notice it's more strong in the South. Why is that? What were there? I'm saying someone in New York really don't. You know, they don't dress up like Yankees and go to yeah. Uh, I uh, that's a real good question. I don't it seems, know. It seems, and I don't know anything about the subculture, but yeah. it seems uh, maybe it's a location thing too. Maybe if there was a war, you know, a battle that was done, the people in that area are mm-hmm. more into it. I don't know. I don't. You know, they, but they have reenactors that do uh, right. like uh, uh, siege warfare in Europe. You know, have you seen those guys? They're the reenactors, and they'll oh, dress in Europe, up in they armor do. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And they so build, maybe that's what that is. They build trebuchets, and they build uh, catapults, and they go out in the fields and flick shit. When, in, 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 by the way, if you haven't seen this, you've got to watch this. It's called uh, Chunkin' Pumpkins. Have you seen that? Chunking Pumpkins? Yeah, it's a thing. And this is in Rhode Island, so this is a Yankee shit. Um <laughs> No, uh, I have not heard of I think it was Rhode pumpkins. Island or Delaware. You throw pumpkins and what? see how far you can throw them or what? Uh, w- no, you make trebuchets and catapults. And, you catapult and, the pumpkin? And like, uh, um, I don't know what you call them. It's uh, where you use compressed air to shoot stuff, cannons. And yeah, you you take pumpkins. You see how far yeah, you can the, shoot them? Yeah, and the pumpkin, I think it's between an 8 and a 10 pound pumpkin. And you see how far you can flick them. 
And the thing about flicking a pumpkin is you don't know if when it gets in midair, and this is something I didn't know, but I found it this last time. Most people use what they the wider pumpkins because they're denser, denser meat. Because some of the orange ones, if you flick it <laughs> after it gets going so fast that it 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 uh, blows apart in the air, and they call that making pie, and so you don't get anything. But they're, <laughs> I mean, they're they're they're. So they've got it down to what what type of pumpkin they're you should throw, do. They're throwing pumpkins uh, to 3,000 yards. But the thing, they're not throwing feet. it. The machine is machine, throwing The machine is throwing So it's really a, co- it's a competition <clears throat> versus yeah. machine. Who can create the yeah. machine that can throw yeah. a pumpkin yeah. apart? And, and all these things are welded deals. I mean, none, none of them look like old-time trebuchets or, or uh, catapults. And... Um, but the stuff in in uh, Europe, because I've I've seen that on History Channel or something, where these guys you know dress up in armor and all that kind of horse shit, and and they're flicking flicking stuff, you know, rocks, whatever. And it's like, did you see? Did you ever? You remember that show, Northern Exposure? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember uh, the disc jockey? I think it was the disc jockey put together a trebuchet. And Tell me again, f- what is a trebuchet? A trebuchet is is a siege uh, weapon, and what it does is it it it's like on a pivot point, and on one end it's got a basket full of weight, on the other end it projects out, and it's got a string coming off of it with a little sling, and you uh-huh. put whatever you want to flick in the sling, and it just and you release the weight, and the weight pulls it down, and flips it, <laughs> and this he uh, flipped a. Uh, piano that was that was i thought that was very cool but he he actually did this but they can and there are people that uh so it's kind of an engineering competition yeah that'll fling uh cars you know like uh now you see that's vw beetles or something like that i'd like to see a beetle oh yeah how far in the air would the beetle go depends on the size of the trebuchet and the weight and all kinds of other you know science bullshit yeah, you know. But it's, on, did it's, you see this on TV? Oh yeah, it was on. It's called Pumpkin so, Chunk and Pumpkin. Oh, so there's they a TV it, show they, on this. No, 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 no. No, they they have a they have a competition every year, right. and people keep coming back for the competition. To it's an excuse to sit around in a field and drink a lot of beer and eat barbecue and and throw shit with machines. You know that is such a perfect uh, thing to do. I'm not. I can. It's kind of cool. Actually, I would, I would go. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't have the gene and made up like get into making shit like that. Yeah, I just that passed me by. Uh, well, yeah. The ability to make things. Well, it's it's gotten you know I mean the the old siege uh, warfare and the uh-huh. and the actual equipment was made out of you know beams, wooden beams and stuff like that. And right. and uh, are you good at? Well, you make furniture, so well I, actually you are good when at that Perry kind of was in. Uh, uh, high school, I think it's high school or junior. We made a trebuchet. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Well, See, it's got- it's one of those typical things. You say we made it. Yeah, I made it. And Perry kind of helped. Yeah, and Perry was Perry gave you the hammer. It. Yeah, well, it's it's kind of like uh, instead of allowing him to be the one that made it, you took it over. I took it over. Oh sure. Oh, so oh, sure. so instead like- of teaching a man a fish, <clears throat> you just gave him the fish, basically. Yeah, and now he doesn't know that. how to make trips. No, now he didn't know how to make the generation. No, the could, line has been, no, the make, line has been broken. He could make one. He I've could? still got I've still got it up in the attic. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's a very cool thing, and there's there's all kinds of uh, details. It depends on how long the sling is, right. how how big that little. So was this, was this supposed to be like a father son project for science or something? <sighs> I think that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. Maybe it was something that we were doing. And took it all over. How uh, old was Perry at the time? Uh, I don't remember. No. I don't remember. It was when he was younger. Yeah. You know, it, My it father cool uh, didn't have the patience. I caddied for him once, and uh, it didn't go well. Yeah. Uh, I stood, you know, the wrong way, put the shadow. Yeah, you know, if he missed the putt, it was my fault. Oh, much. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so that didn't go well. Yeah. I ended up caddying. As a matter of fact, I Were think... you actually carrying the clubs, or did he have a cart? Or no, you... uh, I can't. I don't think. I think, uh, yeah, no, I think I was carrying the clubs at that time. Yeah. And uh, So that was really more punishment than anything. It was supposed to be a father-son bonding experience. Yeah. But it was just it became an opportunity <laughs> Yell at Carl for missing his putts. Oh, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And I had never caddied before, so yeah. I don't know where to stand. You, know? you didn't go back. 
it was we tried it. It didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't you weren't he wasn't trying to get you to play golf. He was just trying to get you. To no, because he had a foursome, you know, and I was oh, going to okay, caddy. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I remember. <laughs> you know, it's bad when the when the threesome the other guys are going, "Hey, lighten up on Carl." Yeah. Oh. yeah you know. But you know, not every father son <laughs> thing works, works out. out. Yeah. No. Did you ever have oh. little father son moments? Uh, well, yeah, we we would go backpacking and stuff like that, oh, and those were you? those were all good good times, you know. And yeah. our we skied together; that was good. Water skiing? The one, uh, no, 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 snow no. ski. Yeah, snow ski. Yeah, yeah, when we lived up in New Mexico, uh, the one time I remember we almost came to blow, <laughs> almost came to blows, and Mom kind of got in between us. Was about this girl that I was wanted to see. It was kind of dating in in uh-huh. high school. And he didn't and, like her. I don't think, no, I don't think mom or him liked her. And right. uh, and my, they knew more than I did. Mm-hmm. And I look back on it, and, yeah, she was like bad news. And she was leading me on. She was dating two other guys, too, most both of them older. Ah. And it was, but it was one of those kind of things where she was kind of teasing about certain possibilities that never really materialized. And it was... Uh, uh, you know, how old were you at the time? Yeah, like fifteen or something. Junior, yeah, probably. So or she was sophomore. teasing about the possibilities that never came to pass. Yeah, oh, that's tough. yeah. So how did you come? Almost come? Maybe to blows a senior. I don't know. With your it father just, on this. I get. It says I'm. You know, it's one of those kind of things. I'm going to go out and see her, and he goes, "No, you're not. I told you, you got to stay here." And, and there were other reasons for staying there. It was too late or whatever. And guys go, "No, I'm. I'm going." And then you know, we it almost got to the point where we were getting ready. It looked like we were going to do it. I remember Mom getting in between us. Really? Yeah. So the the fists were, were balled well, it up. Well, se- it seemed like that, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, that was my impression. I, I don't know if the, he felt like that same thing. But something put Mom in between us. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that was Mom. My dad and I don't wanted know me to hit him. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he, I think when he was uh, with his father, I think he hit his father at one point. And then he went off and joined the Marines. Oh, so that's what it is. You got to hit was, your father to get out, leave the nest. Is yeah, that what it is? Yeah, I really think really? That there you was think an, that there was, was kind an of element deal? there because you know that's he, he said you know he'd see me you know well tee that's off. the way he was raised. Yeah, that's the way he. But I didn't want to. I couldn't get that through my head. It was like I'm not going to hit you. You're my father. I know, but see, that's what his experience was to gain his ex- right. independence as a right. man, right. and he wanted you to do the same thing. That's interesting. And, I, I never and, then, heard of and that. then I realized he didn't. Yeah. He wanted me to. Yeah. Right. Then I wasn't going to. Did you bitch slapping? Oh no! no just then to, I was going not going to just to spite him. Just to spite him. Ooh. So I never did hit him. You had a nasty streak in you. I had a nasty streak. Yeah. Because I didn't hit my father. Yeah. You really. Should, you should have belted the old some bitch. <laughs> He, there was a couple of times he really needed to get belted yeah. too, yeah. but uh, no, yeah, I wasn't going to give him the satisfaction at that point. Yeah, uh, but it just it always didn't make sense to me. And, but you know, we you know he died early, so we didn't have we didn't get to. I don't know. Did you ever have a conversation like uh, you know in my in my mind the story is if you know. He died when I was 21, yeah. so if I was 26 or 7 or 30, you know, I would have had a conversation with him, and we would have cleared the air about the past, mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. you know, remember that time you did that yeah. really horrible yeah. thing to me? What the fuck were you doing? Yeah. We never had that conversation. Yeah. Did you have a conversation? Did you guys clear the air, or did, was there any air to clear? There really wasn't any air to clear. There was just that one time. I mean, we always got, Dad never talked much. Dad, Dad was raised by, uh, in a household of women. It was my yeah, so grandmother. The my was grandmother. With that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I guess it, he was. He was. Uh, it was his mother and his and Aunt Ruby. Yeah. And uh, his dad was. This is when they were living in Jackson, Mississippi. His dad, um, at an early age, uh, had TB, and they didn't have any money, so they put him in a TB hospital in Mississippi. In the 30s or 40s. Now imagine what that was like. Imagine how, and, and it was, and it was for people that didn't have any money. Can you imagine? So there was, there was called the TB hospital. Yeah, I mean, there was places. I think, I think it was mainly for tuber- 
TV people. Right. And so, you know, TV now, you, it's not a problem. Back then, it was right. a problem. Yeah. And so he really didn't. His dad was always kind of sick, sick and stuff. Yeah. So he was just him and... Yeah. And, and so he didn't, He never women. really taught much. I don't know if that's because of the way he was raised or I could get in a word in edgewise. Uh, well, <laughs> there's, yeah, it could be that, too. You know, I don't know. And, so he was and, a strong, silent type? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it, it, well, I guess when you say strong, I don't know what that means, but I guess he was he was definitely silent. But he would talk. But as far as us having conversations, no. But I remember when he, he would we would have the. Uh, so you never came, had a conversation like, remember that time we almost came to blows? No, huh? But you know, I mean, you know, there's uh, we talk about we've talked about. Uh, uh, rite of passage kind of stuff, you know, as you get older. Right. And there was that one time that he took his hunting. We t- I talked about right. that, and uh, that was that was a deal, you know. You just, it, at least in our family, you, you, everybody hunted, and you know, and the kid when the you know when the boy got big enough to shoot a gun, you'd take him out and let him you know kill something. Right. And so there was that, but there was also as we got older, we'd go backpacking. Just he and I would go up backpacking. And that was kind of cool. That's when he fir- I heard, first heard him say "fuck." You know, that was kind so of he a, never a, that was kind home. of a, no, not really. No. Well, yeah, and n- not really up until that point, you know, right. because that's just. But that that kind of said, okay, you're a man now. You can hear your dad say "fuck." And I was going, uh, cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, and that kind of stuff. So we would go out and we'd backpack and fish and eat what we'd catch and you know or get yeah. berries and stuff out of it and that I mean, we had other food too but it was that was kind of fun because it was those were good experiences good times that we always had and uh and ski yeah you know my dad went uh fishing every year usually with his friends mm-hmm. and then we got an a-frame ca- cabin up in canada and so we would get we two weeks vacation and we would drive a thousand miles from chicago up to uh, to you know, to the land Canada. of mosquitoes. Yeah. Uh, and we had a there was a we had a fishing trip with him and his yeah. buddies and me. So that was kind of the father son experience together. Yeah. And uh, and I had some good times with that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. But yeah, fathers. Yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about um, last. The elections have happened since we were. Uh, Last together and uh, yes. Um, so yes, let's talk a little politics. Uh, midterms are over. The Republicans yes. um, are now our overlords. <laughs> and uh, how do you feel about all that? This is uh, this is a long well pause. probably about like you would expect, but it, it, again, I'm getting closer to my. Well, yeah, you my, were last time my were, utopia of, you wanted, of having you them, them to win and have to having them in charge of everything. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to just see what happens. But uh, I I just I don't get it. You don't get it. Uh. Uh-uh. Do you see I that cartoon I posted in uh, our Facebook page where uh, all the people are got signs or cheering and and uh, did you did you no, see that? No, yeah, go to our uh, well, it'll be on our Facebook page. I'll put it on our website yeah. too, carlamike.net. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a great boing boing at this picture, and it's got these two politicians standing in this crowd. It's got all these signs and they're cheering, and it says, you know, don't tell us what's in our food. You know, give our forests to the timber companies. Uh, all this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, take away our internet freedom, and then the line says, "The people have spoken." Yeah. Uh, well, that's really what they've spoken mm-hmm. for. Well, see, that's that's the part that I don't get, and um, I know I know people that are that buy it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. And them I don't worry about. I, I just kind of, okay, they're over there, and, and I can't help them. Right. You know, yeah, I don't understand them. I don't buy it. I don't believe the way they do, but they obviously are very passionate about the way they believe. The people that are in between that uh, 
to say believe in abortion rights, believe in gay marriage, believe in all this other kind of stuff, but yet still support these people. I don't, I don't understand how they can have that kind of dichotomy. Is that the right word? Right. Ooh, I got to use two big words. How, what panache and dichotomy? This is say I'm I'm training. Yes. I'm training to take over your job. Is that what you're doing yeah. here? Yeah. Anyway. Keep working out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it, it, the disconnect is what you're really saying. Yeah. It's a huge Between their, dis- what they believe and who they're voting for. It's a huge disconnect. And I don't, it, for whatever reason, they don't see that by not standing up against the people that are pushing for the abortion rights right. I mean abortion and no gay rights which I saw today that another you know some sort of courts upheld people's four yeah. states ability to discriminate to discriminate yeah. yeah well we call it discrimination they call it you know choice uh, well no there is no choice yeah. uh, they, they uh, call it the sanctity yeah, of marriage yeah whatever they call it uh, <clears throat> that by not standing up against that, you're, you're, my feeling is you're allowing it to happen. Yeah. You, okay. I, I you, you, it, it's not that you're verbally sanctioning it, because if you're verbally sanctioning it, you would believe in it. But if you don't believe in it, yet, yet you don't stand up and fight against it happening. Yeah, and I don't get people, if you, if you got health care that you didn't have access to before, yeah. and, and then you voted yeah. uh, Republican, uh, that, I, don't, I, I don't understand how you could do that. Because uh, well, they would uh, like, like to take yeah. away that health care. Oh, they're going to try. No, I mean, they're, they're already get, making noises about it. They're so trying to we'll defund it. To, or, and, and McDonald's, again, McDonald's is very I, clever, McConnell. Is very clever at using the rules to mm-hmm. to do things. So mm-hmm. you could defund it, gut it, different ways. Yeah, and so we'll yes, yeah. and so we'll see what happens there. And then then when people all of a sudden don't have that, and they've got to go back to the old days, mm-hmm. uh, we'll see what happens. You know, and it's it's going to. Uh, I don't you know. See, I've talked to uh, Republicans, uh, and they well, besides the whole government argument. They don't think health care should be a right. They just really don't. Uh, so well, I don't know. Now, why? Why, why shouldn't why it? Is it? Because you're giving somebody something for free that they don't deserve, that they didn't make the money to buy. They didn't make is that the money to, yeah. They didn't. Right. So you shouldn't be able to have that. Uh, well, their argument is there's already avenues for people. They can go to the emergency room. Which is, I always say after it's that is... It's costing them money anyway. Yeah, I agree. It, it, that's and not I also, free. I, I also free. say, do, you get, do, you, do they, you get a liver transplant at, a, at an emergency room? Do they give you liver transplants there? I don't know the do answer they to Do they do long-term really cancer question. treatments at in emergency rooms? Uh, like you go um, up, like you get chemo treatments every time you go to the emergency room? I don't I, know how that works. You work. know, I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. I'm sure there are limitations to what you can do, but I think if you go into an emergency room, my understanding is they have to treat you. And if what you got is... What does that mean, is, have to treat you? Th- well, they have to administer... Okay, I have cancer. Uh-huh. What are you going to do in an emergency room? Well, they'll say, Carl, you have cancer. Yes, we already we, know that. We I suge- came here Tuesday we, Yeah, we su- We suggest you do this. Now, okay, whether, but I can't do that. So can I come to the emergency room and get that treatment? No, no, but you they'll refer you over to clinics for indigent people for uh, cancer treatment. So for there's clinics for poor people that can't yeah, afford I mean, health parkless. insurance to get cancer yeah. done? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you get yeah, cancer but I, treatment? Yeah. Now, do you get the same kind of treatment that you would get if you uh, were part of the 1%? Of course not. Right. Not not anywhere close, but I think you do get treatment. Now, do you get a full-blown liver transplant? I don't know the answer to that. I really don't know the answer to that. It's, uh, I don't know. See, I think there's some things that I think health care in a country that can that is um, like uh, where mm-hmm. we are, mm-hmm. uh, a first world country. Mm-hmm. I think a first world, a first class country mm-hmm. should have first class services for their populace and health care should be one of those things and the other thing for me is education yeah it, it, it to me a society uh a country 
uh, who has education paid for all the mm-hmm. way through college mm-hmm. would be, and there are a couple some countries that do that mm-hmm. because then you've got an educated populace that can go out and create jobs, create businesses, mm-hmm. create mm-hmm. things, make things happen. Mm-hmm. That's ultimately for the better of the country. Yeah. Well, when it comes to healthcare, it's just the humane thing to do. And uh, Jesus was a great example. All he did was walk around and give people free health care. I mean, wasn't that his whole kind of thing? Would Jesus have a carry permit? Huh? Yeah. Would Jesus Don't have even a carry get me permit? started yeah. there on the guns the, thing. The, um, well, I think, I think part of the deal is, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I was having this discussion with mom the other day, and, it, it, you know, there's this belief that whatever we do, you know, they have this term American exceptionalism. Right. You know, I don't know what the hell that means. That means I guess we're exceptional at everything we do. Is that what that means? I don't know. Well, I have a lot of uh, – I think America is exceptional. I think yeah. the, the freedoms that we have, the ability to do that is an exceptional thing. Does that mean we're better at everything? And no. We well, do to me that's of, kind of what it implies. I guess we're not. Say, we're, we're not. And, we're not and, number one in every category. No, no, no. We're and we're not number one in, in medical insurance and and uh, and life expectancy and uh, infant mortality. See, my and, argument and, is, and, and so if you if you've got other countries, right. say you're number uh, seven, don't you? Wouldn't you think that there are things that you could learn from uh, the people who are one through six? In other words, if you're a race car driver. Right. And you keep coming in number seventh. Right. But you're still spending a bunch of money. You're spending more money than the people that are coming in on in in the first, second, and third positions. Right. Not to mention the fourth and fifth and sixth. Right. You'd uh, look at them and see what they're doing. Wouldn't you look at them to see what they're doing were, right? Were, to see what you could do to make your car run faster, run cheaper. Wouldn't right. you do that? You would if you were being logical. If you well, if you're a baseball team. Yes. And so, Wait, and, it even goes you, further than that, I think. If you believe in American exceptionalism, mm-hmm. okay, and you find out we're number seven, mm-hmm. you're not going to stand for that, right? You're going to do everything in your power to become uh, number one in that area. Well, you would think. You'd Don't think you that think? That, well, you would think that that's what the deal is. Uh, but I just, if that's my belief. In the same thing with education. Wouldn't you think, and, and we're nowhere close. Right. And, and the and tops I, in education, yet everybody seems to keep wanting not everybody, but there are certain people that keep wanting to go back to the reading, writing, and arithmetic, you know, the right. Dick and Jane books or whatever it is they were wanting to do and not push it further. And well, I think, you know, you either push it further to keep up with the with the people that are leading right. education uh, or you fall behind. Right. It's, I'm gonna, it's just that I'm gonna, simple. I fall on the Republican <clears throat> side on education. Uh, I think the system um, that's mainly supported by the Democrats, the teachers' unions and stuff like that, where people don't get fired or they have tenure. I mean, that whole performance yeah. area um, is messed up and needs to be torn oh, down. I, I totally agree with that. I think, so, you know, it, it, the thing, the, here's the thing. If you're a bad teacher, you should get fired. Yeah, if period. you're a bad, bad accountant, you should get fired. If you're right. a bad designer, you should get fired. Right. Okay, Teachers period. should be paid more, and they should get fired, those that aren't good Yes, the ones that stick around should be paid their worth, and the ones right. that are not, they can go on and do, find so, something else to do, something they enjoy more, or whatever. That, that whole area needs to be reformed, and Democrats need to get and out I of the way. I think you'd probably have to say that that's that. probably the, the, I feel that way about uh, unions in general. I mean, unions in general do some really good things, but there have been stuff about unions. Okay, here's a good example. Uh, Nita's dad. Flew from American Airlines for you know his entire life, and he was part of the union. Right. He was a union leader for the flight right. engineers, right. and they had this incredible uh, retirement package and right. stuff. So let's say you're, you're a flight engineer or a pilot or whatever, and you fly for thirty years, and you're at the time you you retire, you're making a hundred thousand a year, mm-hmm. and your retirement. You get to continue making ninety thousand a year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now all of a sudden you're not flying; you're making ninety, but the company's got to hire somebody to replace you. Right. And companies companies have their um, and their so lengths of time before they become obsolete because they don't adapt to the marketplace. Yeah, and so and, uh, and uh, I, I get all that. And so I think you know the. the the unions have overreached, but I think management has also done, 
uh, equal things. Right. You know, I mean, there's, and, and there's here's kind the, of a, here's it's to me it's you simple. try and counterbalance. Yeah. To me, it's very simple, Michael. If you don't want to have unions, do right by people. It really comes down to that. Yeah. You know what? Uh, um, fast food restaurants do right by your people, and they won't yeah. unionize. Yeah. Uh, and that's where unions. That's unions, where they started to begin with, right? Yeah. Started back in the 1900s, they were mm-hmm. child labor, and you yeah. know it was horrible conditions. You yeah. Know? So if you don't, you know, treat. And right now, I just saw uh, uh, somebody I forget. I think was on John Stewart. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up and and post it on our site. But uh, talked about the slave labor conditions uh, in the in the farming fields of America as we speak. These United States? These United States. Really? What's yeah, the deal? Just, what, are they running kids in, this, in uh, the fields? They're just working these people and paying them nothing, <clears throat> basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, and bitching about them being illegal all at the same yeah, time. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's that. So, you know, whether it's fast food worker, whether it's somebody working the mm-hmm. farming fields, if they're being taken advantage of, mm-hmm. then they need to unionize. But, so then unions are good in that area, right? Yeah. Uh, in lack of... The government not putting down some regulations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or businesses not self-regulating, you're going to need the union. And businesses there. are not going to self-regulate. That's a right. joke. But That's the, an absolute The problem joke. is once that happens and the standard is then brought up by that mm-hmm. union, mm-hmm. You used to, at, at some point that union no longer becomes useful or productive right. to the society because it's just – Starts to bureaucratize. Well, they're not going to phase themselves out. And they don't, then there's no phase out survival process. mode. Then yes. they've got to try and show right. that, hey, we're then valuable it, yeah. to you. And then we've got to prove our value by right. raising wages every year. Right. So then that goes right. the opposite. So it goes the opposite yes. side. So on, on the one hand, in the beginning, it's, it's, it's necessary because this company is not doing the right mm-hmm. by people. Yeah. And then it becomes, it becomes an impediment. So it's a very yeah. – really, there should be some kind of, I don't know, law – is the right word, but really unions have a purpose in certain well, industries, this, and they but they should only go on for so long. Well, local governments and uh, state governments are now passing uh, laws to up the minimum wage. Yeah, right? San not, Francisco just they, did yeah, fifteen dollars. Yeah, and they're not. They're, they're not. So that is an answer to yeah. not having a union. Yeah, yeah, right? and let the locals take care of it, right. and that's okay. If you want to, if if you want to get to the point where okay. Let's say Minneapolis right. and St. Paul. Let's say Minneapolis raises their uh, uh, minimum wage to twelve an hour, and St. Paul wants to keep theirs to eight seventy five. Let's just say that. Yeah. You know, it's not that far to drive. So you drive to Minneapolis to have a job. Right. You say you could do the Don't same thing. Don't have the states competing. Yeah. It's the same thing here. You yeah. live in Arlington. Say Fort Worth wants to keep it at, at, uh, at wants to bump it to twelve, and Dallas wants to keep it at eight seventy five, and you're going to get in your car right. and you're going to drive the same distance, and you're looking for those kind of jobs where you're going to go. You're going to go to Fort Worth. So, do you think then that should be a state level decisions, pretty much instead of a federal minimum wage? Uh, or is a federal minimum wage should only be regulated towards people that are working in the federal government? Uh, yes. I think yeah, that, I think I think that that's probably because I agree. Good. Fifteen dollars in San Francisco, yeah. uh, may not yeah, be appropriate. See, okay. It's not the same as fifteen dollars okay. in uh, in Iowa. What about the argument, like Walmart, right? Uh-huh. Uh, one of our biggest employers, and the yeah. argument is that they're not paying a living wage, so we, the people, uh-huh. are yeah. paying it mm-hmm. through social programs. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh, we're subs- we're so sub- shouldn't it there, the government then, in that situation, it seems like we really need the government to step in and say, on a national level, here's the minimum wage. Are you not, because subs- Walmart's are you not-, not subsidizing Walmart then? No, but I'm No, saying- the government is subsidizing Walmart. Right now they, they were, are. Yeah, they're right, because Walmart's pay minimum- paying well, or minimum wage they- is too low. So they're- this is the argument uh-huh. on the other side yeah. for the federal government to come in and, and, op- and create a federal minimum wage for the people like Walmart who aren't responsible enough. To give uh, a living wage to their employees. Well, if we had, uh, so you see, I can see if the we argument had on both adults sides. in Washington that we could do that. I mean, there's going to be some places that are going to come. You know, like Seattle, I think was one. Of, you're going to the p- places that are going to pay living wages are going to be uh, more uh, liberal, conserv. I mean, liberal areas. I would think. You're not going to get yeah. in the South. Well, I mean, you I know, keep, Costco. I keep pays banging it. on the South. My mom keeps bitching at me because I bitch about Mississippi, but you're just not going to see that down there. You're not going to see it. Here's the thing I think that people don't 
get on the right as much. So on the right, the attitude is get the government out of our lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the government, the more companies abuse their position, whether it be with the with the planet and they pollute our waters and rivers, mm -hmm. or be the fast food industry with the employees that don't pay enough for a mm -hmm. living wage, the more companies abuse the earth or people, then the more the government is going to get in and regulate. So the answer isn't less regulation from the government. The answer the is mail. responsibility yeah. at the corporate level. Yeah. Okay, That's where I think the Republicans missed the boat. They, they think it's the government shouldn't be doing all this unnecessary regulation, yeah. da 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 yeah. And, yeah, there's times where it can go off the rails. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is, if the companies are being responsible, you're not going to have as much government regulation. And you, you do find co companies that are going to be responsible and yeah. be good to their employees and stuff. But I mean, it, Costco's but it, a great but it, example of that. Yeah. yeah Versus Sam's the, Club, which is yeah. Walmart, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So here's a good example. Don't tell me you can't do it because Costco's doing it. Yeah. Okay. They're not. Their employees aren't going to uh, work Thanksgiving, and they're yeah. not being paid minimum wage. You know, and and uh, boy, man, somebody at and some Costco's point, a new sponsor of Carl and Mike. Our new, our yeah. latest and greatest sponsor. Yeah. They, yes. Yeah. They like us. We like them. Carl. It, Costco. Go to Costco. Go to Costco. Not Sam's take, Club. Take your Sam's Cub card when it uh, expires. Burn it. And see, go to Costco. See, Costco, this is the level of support because you can get. That's right. As a sponsor of Carl and Mike. Ooh, very nice, Michael. Very you nice reach, job. Huh? You like that? I like that, yeah. Kind of interjected a little we can, stuff. We can create our own sponsors. Huh? And we're sponsoring Costco right now. Yeah, we're sponsoring Costco. And I think everybody ought to support that. I and, agree. And you know, the, here's the thing that's weird. It, it's like I would love to have seen what old man Walton would have done if he had to live this long. I wonder if the the, the business would have been the same if no, he was still alive. I don't think the apples fall too far from the You're saying the kids who well, reach okay, multi-billionaires? Well, okay, example. I remember when Sam's was first there. They, one of the big things they uh, sub, uh, promoted was the fact that the stuff they had was made in America. This is American yeah, stuff. Yeah, I get that, right. You go into Sam's today it's and try China. and find stuff that's made in America and, find, and what you're going to find is most of that stuff made in China. Did Sam... Was Sam a big proponent of paying his people a living wage back in the day? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm just saying there's certain aspects of it. And, and, yeah. and you know, uh, I don't know. And the argument it's is just, you want low, low prices you're going to have to pay, but I don't buy that argument. I mean, Costco prides itself on mm -hmm. giving deals mm -hmm. and uh, are able to do it. So anyway. They give great deals, Costco does. They do. Our better friends deal, at Costco. Better deals than Walmart or Sam's. Yes, so so there's that. So we got a little blowback about our midterm blues. We uh, did get some blowback. We did get some blowback. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I want to address that a little bit, this argument of kind of, you guys are just the same as, as the Limbaugh's of mm -hmm. the world by, mm -hmm. by putting down Republicans. Mm -hmm. And so what, what say you, Michael, to quote my good friend Bill O'Reilly, let's mm -hmm. say you, Michael, mm -hmm. about that. Are we just being like Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity and being um, against the other side? Well, uh, just speaking for myself, I can slide into that. Yeah, I can slide into that because I get pissed. I get um, – uh, and part of that may be just I had some dealings with bullies when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And my experience with bullies – is that uh, you can only take it so long, and then you got to push back. That's one thing they do understand is pushing back, and so uh, <clears throat> that's my experience in uh, in the past. And I think that's kind of the way I feel now with some of this stuff. Is um, so I would say yes, but I think at some point you have to make a stand. Yeah. You can sit back and go, "Well, I really wish that would." Uh, be better and everybody could be nice and friendly and and yeah that would be See, great and 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 i think it would be great is if everybody could sit down and talk and have a have an adult conversation i'm waiting for that to happen you can I, have I would adult like conversation to, I would like with to someone who's acting like an adult but yeah you can't with someone who's acting like a bully no and, and i agree with this bully and, thing. and you could you could say that on both sides you could say harry reed's acting that way too you know you could i mean everybody uses what they've got to accomplish what they want to accomplish and and so i would say yeah you can point to both sides but again it's one of those kind of things 
and I would say, okay, well, where did it start? And I don't know the answer to that. Where did it start to go off the rails? Where did it start to get bad? I think Fox News has a lot to do with that. I well, think it polarized the sides a lot more. And Fox would say, well, we're just responding to the fact that all the news media outlets have always been real liberal. And, you know, we've talked about that. And, yeah, you could say they probably always have had, had a tendency to be more uh, Okay, so you give a liberal. voice to the conservative, but what that conservative voice is when you, you know, mocking, uh, calling Obama a Muslim and yeah, and, well that's you know, creating uh, that's the fake stuff with Clinton. that's the kind of part that bothers me the most is you take it, it, you take it isn't like Fox is sharing you, a hell of a lot of ideas. Well, see, I would like to know where did that start? Where 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 did for started instance, with the Vietnam War? In my opinion, the country what's started that? to split. The Vietnam War, you know, you had the hippies and uh-huh. yeah, you know, the whole '60s movement uh, galvanized the youth towards mm-hmm. a more progressive bent. Mm-hmm. You had a conservative uh, families. That know. were afraid that things were going to fall right. apart. And These hippies are going to take over right. and we're going to become and Marxist kind of split, world. And, then, and, yeah. and that generation, the baby boom generation, right? Mm-hmm. Some went down the hippie road and some mm-hmm. didn't. Some, mm-hmm. went to, some went to war Wall and Street. served their country proudly. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you yeah. had that. Yeah. You had that split. Yeah. Uh, so it's a baby boomer split that's been there. But that wasn't that you know those people that decided to become hippies and decided to went to go to war. That was not necessarily a choice they made because we had the draft back then. You know, so we don't have the draft now. If we had the draft now, there would not have been ten years in no. Iraq or ten years in Afghanistan. Yeah, would not have happened. I think it should be. I think we should have a draft. It should be. Ooh, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Because you know what? If we had a draft, we wouldn't go to war. The worst thing that ever happened to this country the from, the, from, from the standpoint yeah. of where we are stuck in the Middle East is because we don't have a draft. Yeah. If you had a draft, man, there, and, a, and a fair draft, not yeah. the George Bush six furloughs or whatever, the National Guard thing that he went and did. Yeah. A, a fair draft, you go in, regardless of education level, regardless of income level. Yeah. It's across the board. You get picked, sorry. It's like the lottery. And just so, just for all of y'all that don't know, yes, uh, George was in the National Guard, but back then the National Guard was not called up to do any kind of active duty whatsoever. Like it, it was a way for them to avoid uh, serve and avoid combat. Yeah, look it up. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, yeah, you're right. Would we have gone up? if we if we go to war? The outcry against it would be mm-hmm. quick and powerful. Yeah, and you know what? If we had a draft, a lot of and when 9/11 happened, I think that a lot of people would have been. Up for that, but, see, if but you they have, wouldn't have gone to Iraq. They would have been up for then Afghanistan. you have unruly people in the military. See, the military yeah. doesn't like that because then you got people coming into the military that don't. If it's an all voluntary thing, you at least assume that people want to do that because right. they they making a conscious decision to join. So there's some sort of desire hey, uh, on their part right. to do that. If, if you and with a draft, there's people that aren't going to want to go in the military. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, you create mm-hmm. an outlet, peace mm-hmm. peace corps or something, where you're going to give service. You're going to give service to your country one way or the other. You're either going to going to fight for your country in, in a war situation or you're going to uh, serve your country in a Peace Corps type well, of situation. Well, that's what the National Guard was. That's why it was an out for Georgie. You yeah. know, so I don't I don't know that I agree with that. I, I think it's, an, think all, no, I think it's an all or nothing. I think if you, you know, there's no uh, college deferments, there's no marriage deferments, there's no any kind of deferments. If you want if 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 this country's going to go to war, everybody's got to go to war. Right. The kids of the 1% go to war just what like the ones that are uh, living in poor areas of Harlem. Right. You know. I so go back. And they, but the, you know, I want to go back to uh you know, are are we serving? Are we just serving the, the divide, the further divide? I know our audience is re- relatively small. Yeah. Um, but I kind of. So both of you, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. I think it's the same thing for me. It's not. I don't have anything against Republicans. I don't have anything against a different philosophy about government and mm-hmm. willing to find the best ideas wherever they may mm-hmm. be, right or mm-hmm. left. Mm-hmm. What I do have a problem with is bullies. Yeah. And uh, and and. A bully. What does a bully do when you're a kid? A bully basically attempts to control you. Mm-hmm. You know, tell you what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, by force mm-hmm. or by fear. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fox News is bully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They go by fear, and the attitude that I find on the right mm-hmm. uh, is one of a of a 
we're going to impose our beliefs are better than yours. Okay, mm-hmm. we can argue whose beliefs are better. Mm-hmm. Our beliefs are better than yours, and we're going to impose our beliefs uh, on you mm-hmm. in a way that I just don't see on the other side. Well, that's the so part, people that do that. That's the part that I don't. It, 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 it's, it's like. It's my problem with religion, too. It really is the same yeah. thing. It's a bully in the end. Well, I don't have. I, I, it's, see, my way is better. And I'm going to tell you how to live. If you it saw is, that interview, it's on better 60 for me minutes, and it's yeah. better for you, and and that's yeah. why we're going to be teaching creationism and in 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 an equal thing yeah. with that evolution. Or, yes, you get now, okay, you, here's, here's they're, the, what they're doing is you get your belief and I get my belief when it mm-hmm. comes to science, mm-hmm. and we need equal yeah equal beliefs shared, and that's you know in other but words we're imposing. They our can beliefs. get that at church. Yeah. they can get that at church. That's right. There There's already a, a place for that. Yeah. It's called church. Yeah, it's a right? place for that for church. Yeah, but they want to impose church into society. See? Well, their church, into their church. Society. Okay, that's the problem I got with. You see, it's not like they're trying to say, okay, we're going to teach creationism as it applies to the Christian faith, but we're also going to teach what the Hindus believe and what the Muslims believe. Yeah, they're not the up Jews for that believe. at all. They're not up for no. that at all. And it's, you know what? That should be taught in church. That's right. Not in state. Correct. Okay. You don't get to. You don't get to do that. Yeah. And it's a bullying. It's yeah. a bullying tactic. Well, so I saw this interview uh, on 60 Minutes last week with this woman interviewing this. Uh, in Mo- There's a big Muslim community in Britain. Mm-hmm. And talked to this guy who basically wants Sharia law in Britain. That's what they mm-hmm. want. You know, oh, they want it there? Oh, they want it there. Absolutely. So she's asking them and saying, uh, you know, he's, he, uh, she's saying, I'm not wearing a scarf. I don't have to wear the scarf. And, and, and I want everybody to watch that because the attitude is the same. The attitude was, um, uh, you should do what I say because of what I say is right, pretty much. Oh, really? What I believe, you know. They want all of, they, they want, want Sharia it. for their, their oh, community? No, they want it for, they want it for they want it, period, across oh. Britain, right? Okay. Well, and I don't believe it, you know. So, in other words, at one point, he says, you're violating, he says to her, you're violating my rights because you're not wearing, you're not covered head to toe. Mm-hmm. So you're violating my rights, uh, and that's the mentality there. Well, that's in other words, I'm going. You have to conform to my way of mm-hmm. thinking, or you know, I'm going to force it. Well, and, I was, and whether that's you know, well, you know, this, that's this gets in. Well, yeah, and this gets into another thing about. Um, Globalization. They've all. There's been all this stuff over the last twenty, thirty years about how globalization is great and the world is flat and all this kind of stuff. Well, from a business standpoint, yeah. From a cultural standpoint, it ain't working out so well. We're not there yet. We're not mature enough. No, we're not mature enough. And I'm not sure. If it, 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 from a business standpoint, I'm not sure how well it's working out. Basically, what you, it's better. a race to the well, it's a race to the bottom. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of the jobs here because we're gonna ship them over to China because we're gonna we go want, to the cheapest country that has the lowest wages. We're gonna go to the cheapest wages. stuff, and and they're not going over there to provide us cheaper. Uh, uh, Options. They they say that they're going over there to maximize profits. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know. So anyway, from a cultural standpoint, it had it. it it's uh, the shakedown ain't over. You know, and it, it's it's basically. I mean, and I Look, think you to know, me, to me, Michael, though, the internet has made globalization a re- reality, whether you want to or whether the country, where the world's ready for it or not. Uh, the move, the movement is towards connecting that which has been previously as- been disconnected. What do we got here? Well, I don't know. Oh, you can't be kidding me here. So we're going to get some overhead music. Yeah. Oh, somebody's, all right. Yeah, well, I guess oh, we are. Oh, they're cutting it back. Well, there, there's, there's some ambient sound. Now, that's going to be... It's Christmas, Michael. We're going to have to listen to Christmas carols. Yeah, there you go. Turn the volume down. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's going to, like, fuck with our audio. Yes, if that they is. have that, well, we may have to move to another place. Maybe that's what they're quietly you trying really to tell us that, that we need to move on. The slow, so the slow Christmas creep, Michael. Yes, you, we're going to impose yeah. our Christmas carols on yeah, you. We're you impose our, yeah, yeah, because we want you to get out there and buy it. Uh, but you know, from a cultural standpoint, you know, the, having all these cultures mix. You know, if you if if you really feel that strongly about your culture and stuff, don't come over here and try and change me. Live, right. live where that is. And if you're not living there, why aren't you living there? Right. 
why aren't you living there? Well, is it because their law is really a lot more strict than you want it to be? We're, getting, we're stoning people to death. You want to stone people to death over here? It ain't going to happen. Right. Right. And don't try and talk to me about that or the honor killing. It's not going to – you do honor killing over here, your ass is going to prison. There's not somebody going to pat you on the back. Right. The problem is is we have the technology now to kind of, you know, we are all one through our technology. Well, you're assuming that the, the, the countries yeah, yes. will allow well, full access. We're not there, but that's where there. we're going. Yeah. And so it's just a matter, okay, so let's say – Let's say Western Europe and the United States have gone there first. Mm-hmm. Korea, you could argue South Korea, you know, and the other countries are trying to block it, mm-hmm. and uh, and because different cultures and different countries are at different places of consciousness, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, a hundred years from now, we'll be in a much better place than we mm-hmm. are now. We're just not mature enough as a species. Uh, to be able to allow for uh, the different cultures uh, and to not try to impose our culture on the other. Well, I, it would be great if we could sit down and celebrate different cultures. Okay? Yes. You celebrate the, Some of the us differences. Can. Celebrate the differences and not, and not just focus on the things that we don't like about a, a, right. a culture. Well, I mean, yeah, and and it's, you know, it's, it's a very interesting time. Apple, that remember we talked last week, uh, Apple, you know, Tim Cook came out as mm-hmm, gay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, they uh, had a statue of Steve Jobs or whatever oh, in Russia. A, or, it was an iPhone. I, it was a, a, an actual statue of an iPhone that was like, you know, I don't know, 10 don't feet know. tall. Was, and I then, thought there was a computer element to this statue. Yeah, yeah. And they was. tore it down in Russia yeah, <laughs> because, because Tim Cook said yeah. he was gay. Steve, Steve Jobs wasn't gay. Yeah. So... This is a whole new, to me, this is a whole new thing we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. And experience is, um, because I think America does have an influence, which is actually good. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, America is adapting the gay, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But other countries are, like, still prisoning people. So it's going to be interesting as business interacts with each of these, how they deal with that. Well, and I think what would be great there is for Apple to go, what, what does Apple do? Does Apple then say we're not selling in Russia? Well, Russia may say Apple's not selling right, here. Right. You know, and that, and that would be okay. You're just going to have to be – Apple's going to have to be okay with that. They're taking a stance, and I think that that's yeah. – I think that's – that what he did was courageous, and right. it showed leadership. Right. Now, let's see what happens when right. – let's see if, and I don't let's have see a, if other no. corporations – I would love to see more examples right. of that kind of leadership, right. and I think Which that brings that's great. Which brings us back to our last conversation i would have a problem if apple then to run in china put a chip in their computer to block you know internet access to certain sites yeah. if apple did that i'd have a problem that would goes back to our previous conversation and what was that episode episode well, china six wind, or seven. china will wind up just stealing the design put their yeah. own chip in the market and is zapple or something like that i don't know they'll they'll wind up doing something um so I want to talk about one other thing here mm-hmm. before we close it out. Uh, I thought it was fascinating. Um, there's a company out there. Tell me what you think about this. There's a, there's a company out there that you can get cremated, okay? Mm-hmm. And they will separate uh, the carbon from mm-hmm. your cremated essence. And then they will high heat that carbon and turn it into a diamond. And so you end up with, <laughs> you end up with a diamond made out of you. So a lot of people are, are hearing about this and going rushing to this company to get cremated, and they get back grandma as a diamond. What do you, what do you oh, think Jesus. about that? I just, you know, I'm never surprised at the... Uh, I thought that was a fascinating... I actually kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, or you could get shot into space. Well, yeah. I, I never quite got the shot in the space. Why? Why is that a good? Why is that an interesting thing? Why is it an interesting thing to get made into a diamond? I can give you that one what? because okay, now you got you've got an essence of grandma that you can pass down, you know, family to family like a, a wedding ring is passed down, and, and you could it's pass the essence down of, the, it's, it's well it's you the could essence. pass pass down the jar of ashes as well. Well, they do that. All right, they, yeah. they've got the but really at the urine you put it on the fireplace and then what you know what. Really, yep, I never well, quite got that. I mean, it, we still have, we still have urines of our pet yeah. cats. Well, okay, and I still don't know what the this. hell to do with the damn you, cats. Let's say you've got a pile of ashes. You can make it into a lot of things. Yeah, uh, you could make it into uh, a a, 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 a 
a pile of plastic dog shit, but a diamond that you could pass on down to people and say, that's grandma. Right. But a diamond, is, a diamond is a diamond that's, right. that's exactly right. It's precious. P- panache. Yeah, it's got panache. Exactly. And you'd want to. Oh, and like it's better than how they do diamonds now, which is cut off the hands of little South African Episode children. Episode 9, brought yes. to you by Panache. Panache. That would be what, what would be a product that would be panache. Panache, yeah, just a diamond made out of your body. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, anyway, I, I thought, no. it's amazing what yeah. we're coming up with. I, yeah, well, I personally, I like the idea. Do yeah. I like the I idea could, of just taking the ashes and and scattering? I can see somewhere. you as a kind of a kind of a, a ruby, uh, a ruby, a ruby. Um, you know that you drill through your tongue. One of the what do they <laughs> call those little uh, a tongue stud? A tongue stud. Yeah. I got grandpa in my mouth. How about that? There you go. Yeah. Or don't they also, you can put those right through your dick or something like that? Oh, Prince Albert. <laughs> What's I think that called? I think it's called a Prince Albert. Really? Yeah. When I you think put a stud? Some, so, yeah, I think some sort of stud in your dick. See, you could have. You could Why have, would you do that? You could have a diamond Why? stud in your dick. Why would you put a stud in your dick to begin with? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand nipple rings, really, either. I know. I never got that either. You know, and then nipple shields are yeah. a bridge too or far. Or the nose thing. Yeah, I, I don't get that. Or I tell you, the other one is, is like the big uh, circles yeah. and hoops. Now, the one that I, I haven't seen kind of anybody do out. yet is the big... Uh, like oh, plate yeah. in their lower lip. Plate in the lower kind of lip. Let, yeah, they haven't quite gone there. I think it's hard to talk. One really? thing that I do like is scarring. Have you seen scarring? It's, it's like tattooing, except it's scarring. It's tribal scarring, so they do the No, the, I haven't the seen the actually scar you? Yeah, and what you do to make it stand up more is you rub ashes, I think, if I read rightly. And that does something to make the, the, the standing. You know, the tribal scarring people do on boys when they reach a certain age, you know. I didn't and, know this. Oh, yeah. No, well, in I Africa, was, it's, it's a tribal thing. And, so a scar. All right. Yeah, so, the, yeah, but then it's going to heal at some point. Then you're left with what? You're left with you're not. It's not. Yeah, raised. You, you. Yeah, it's raised. Is it? Yeah, it's like it's embossed. See, I couldn't go for that. Huh? Yeah. Well, tattoos. I never got a tattoo. You know, well, I was, generation. I was asking Nita. Okay, if 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 uh, if I was going to get a tattoo, what kind do you think I should get, and where should I get it? What'd she say? She's kind of looking at me, going, you know, shaking, shaking her, head her head, going, "Fuck, what are we talking about now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I just not. I'm still trying to get her over the hump on the beard. Yeah, know? yeah. The beard is, is a little beard causing a little controversy. No, it's not. I mean, she's beyond that now, but it's just kind of. She's just looking at you like really kind of humor. Yeah, 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 I think so. Right yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think that should wrap us on episode nine. Yeah. Um, let's talk about a couple things. Uh, we do have. Uh, on iTunes, Podjacks. Of course, if they're listening to this, they already know this, don't they? What's that? Where we are. We want to hear, uh, we have show notes and links on carlandmike.net yeah. for this show and all shows. So if you are listening to us on iTunes and you want to get links to what we've been talking about, we'll be putting links to the yes. place where you can go be turned into a diamond. And I'm sure we'll have links to uh, some other things that we've talked about today. Yeah. Like that, uh, that thing in Rhode Island where they... What did yeah, you, where they well, the, and on Facebook too. Yeah, yeah in in fact, uh, Zoe made a comment on her Facebook site about last week's episode about uh, alcohol enemas, and she goes, "Yes, indeed, they are true." She got this little gem from uh, rehab. I think that was episode seven. Actually, was it seven? Uh, whatever. So we have verification. We have we, 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 like find us on verification. <clears throat> find us on Facebook at Carl and Mike, yeah. and on Twitter at Carl and Mike. Love to hear from you. Love Are to we th- trending on Twitter? No, we haven't trended on Twitter. Yes, we're we're just a drip. We're, we're a just a, we're, we're a little drip, drip in the ocean of Twitter, <laughs> but slowly becoming a stream. Michael. Yes, where that's our goal to move from drip to stream. Yeah, and then we become a river. Yeah, and then we trend. And then we, that's the magic. That's the trend. That's that's how it happens. What would be trending as? Um, probably kill Carl and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I don't know. All right, take take care, everyone, and we will see you uh, next week. Next week, bye, bye. <laughs>